Hello everyone and welcome back to Imperator Rome. I'm Lord Formans here with a guide on culture. So for this one I figured we'd use my Seleucid Empire where I'm at. As you can see, still got a way to go. I'm already massive. I've reached Empire State, although I can't afford to put in slots. So let's talk about culture. So every pop in the world has a culture. There are plenty of them and they have issues. So each of them has a culture group. So for example, if we're up here, the culture group is the Pratani, and that is all of these. However, it's not the same as the Gaelic one that's over in Ireland. So be aware that <clears throat> the culture groups do make a difference. So like within the Italian one, you've got Sibelian, you've got Etruscan, you've got Umbrian, Ligurian, Venetic, can't read that one on its culture. Roman, you've got lots of cultures, and what culture group they belong to matters in terms of their happiness. Cult, um, people of a culture are much happier being ruled of someone of a similar culture, if that makes sense. So I believe if we go down here, I can show you this properly. So as you can see that these people are of the Aeolian, I probably said that wrong, my apologies, culture group so they have of course they are unintegrated but they are hellenistic so they get a plus 20 happiness there as well but if we were to go and we were to look at a culture that is not of the hellenic group and look at them you will see they do not have that instead they are unintegrated foreign culture this means expanding with your culture group even if you don't integrate the population is going to be much lo more loyal so now that we've briefly discussed that let's talk what i talk about <laughs> Let's talk when I say about integration. So any population in the game is, of course, divided into five categories. If you're a civilized nation, you're basically going to have no tribesmen. So I'm not going to really talk about this. If you're a tribe, you're probably going to have more tribesmen than anything else. So um, in which case, I'm going to do a video on tribes later and we'll go into that more. So the five for that matter, all have different levels of integration. The highest, of course, is nobles. They are usually your starting culture group. Um, Roman for Rome, Macedonian for pretty much all the successor states, etc., etc. Basically, your starting capital region usually has your culture that is your noble government. Um, if you promote additional cultures to that level, it does have a 5% cultural happiness penalty which means you really don't want to create too many noble um cultures that are integrated you're much better off leaving them with the second level which are citizens for every level of your citizens you do re citizens is the sorry i should clarify both nobles and citizens are considered integrated cultures which means they go for the basically the primary culture happiness stuff up here so you can kind of see what their happiness should be Every new um, population that you move up will reduce integrated cultures. So anyone that has this sort of like, I don't know, Stonehenge-like representation <clears throat> uh, will reduce them by 4% happiness. If we were to promote these guys to Noble, it would have a 5%. So promoting something from Freeman, which is your basic non-integrated one, to a Noble has considerable penalties. And so you probably don't want to ever do it. Citizens um, are much better than freemen because they provide uh, additional trade routes and they provide research. However, they don't provide as much gold, they don't provide any gold or um, manpower, which you do want, but at some point it becomes a little redundant having more. So, um, and then if you wanted to weaken them, you could demote them and make them a slave. And then if you really want to, you could put them all the way down to a tribesman. Interestingly not, making them a tribesman uh, does not actually have a uh, penalty in my case here. Um, mainly because everyone's already above that. But putting them down to a slave, as you can see, has, oops, has the disenfranchised stuff, culture happiness, slavery imposed. Basically it means those populations, while they're all going to be slaves and give you more tax income than freemen, they're going to be extraordinarily rebellious and you're going to have to keep squashing revolts. With the current game economy where trade is better than taxes, I don't really see a great need to convert um, a whole population to slaves. You could probably do it if you wanted to make a tax-based farming country, but right now it's just easier to trade, so I don't know why you'd bother. 
So uh, once you start integrating a culture, you'll see it takes a certain amount of time to do so. It also takes a certain amount of political power. As this goes on, the integration continues. There'll be events. Uh, read the events carefully. Some of them increase your integration process, but at the same time cause penalties temporarily to your other culture groups that are already integrated. So just be aware that if you accept too many of them without reading, you could accidentally massively offend your other integrated cultures. So those that's integration versus non-integrated populations. Freeman, lower, they're non-integrated. Citizen, higher, they're integrated. I actually have no idea where tribesmen stand on it, but considering the order here, I'd say they count as unintegrated. Now, there are ways to improve a culture's happiness beyond just integrating. These are your decisions. Now, the decisions change based off their status of integrated or not. Um, if they are integrated, they get these ones, roughly, for nobles. Um, let's see, where's our nobles? Here's our nobles. You can see we can give them 5% happiness, but we lose citizen and noble output. This is, if you're for some reason really desperate to keep your nobles happy, but you're going to lose some of the biggest benefits of having a noble one. Uh, down here is a slightly better one, right of appeal. You can get culture happiness. All you lose is freemen and slaves, but you keep your um, culture going. It also makes it easier to prosecute non-Macedonian characters. And then you've got easing citizenships, which gives more citizen happy citizen happiness, but ruins your noble happiness. Um, and you can also allows families to adopt characters of cultures other than Macedonian. Could be very useful if you don't have a lot of Macedonians in your country, but you have Macedonian as your noble culture. Yeah. And this is another one here that just provides happiness at the cost of citizen and freeman output. If I were to pick between these ones, uh, you'd probably want to pick this one for your nobles. Um, just because you're going to have more freemen and slaves uh, from your other cultures, but you're only going to have a limited amount of nobles and citizens. Now, if we jump down to the citizen level, you'll see the cultural decisions change again. You can create an honor guard, which gives happiness and freeman output, but does offend other major cultures. So if we were to do this for Babylonian, the Persian and the Median culture would be unhappy. I'm not sure what happens if you apply an honor guard and then apply another honor guard. I think you can only give it once um, based off my test, but I could be wrong. Um, in which case, you're going to offend two cultures with 6% happiness in exchange for getting three on the other one, which doesn't make this one that worth it. Uh, municipal self-rule, don't click this one. <laughs> Basically, you create a client state out of your country. Um, why would you want to lose one of your major cultures? Um, I mean, I guess you could. I don't know why you'd want to. Uh, patronage over here is a little bit interesting. 6% happiness and a boosted citizen output in exchange for freemen and slaves going down. Uh, this one could actually be very useful, um, mainly because if your culture is of a citizen integrated status, you're probably going to want more citizens than freemen and slaves. Uh, on the assuming you have other cultures to take those places, um, could be very useful. And this one, um, it's not letting me do because I don't have enough stability. Uh, but basically, this boosts the culture group. This is why these are important. Uh, basically, you get 5% happiness in all the culture group in exchange for losing a um, output of your citizens and some stability. So this could be really big if you used it on a mass culture group like um, the Anatolian culture group. You could basically get all these cultures slightly more happy in exchange for one culture being less productive. Now, if we jump down here to a non-integrated one, you'll see we have a lot more options. Founding a colony, it can be very useful if you want to stabilize and convert a region. Um, on the other hand, it does offend the culture and makes it harder for culturally integrate them. <laughs> it basically, the culture integration speed, if you're not going to integrate them, doesn't really matter. Um, this will allow you to convert cultures much faster. So if you're Rome and you're trying to colonize Gaul, it might be worth founding some colonies up there. Yes, you're going to face some more rebellions in the short run, but at the same time, you're going to get some pops automatically moved to that territory, and um, you'll convert the population living there faster. 10% uh, pop assimilation speed isn't that massive, though, so this you got to be a little bit wary if you want to use this. 
Uh, you're usually better off just building grand temples. And then you got right of intermarriage. Increased integration speed gives a little bit of loyalty. Culture happiness. However, it does temporarily penalize your integrated culture happiness. And it does allow pop assimilation. This might be one of the better ones to give. Um, it doesn't have a permanent long-term penalty, as you'll see. The negative is only 60 months. Once that's gone, all you get is the positive one, the happiness and the integration speed. Um, you don't have to integrate the culture after you give this to them. Um, it'll just apply the happiness. The loss of stability hurts a bit, but not massively. Then you got protection against torture. Um, you lose slave output, but you get culture happiness and integration speed, and you do have a temporary integrated culture penalty. Um, also, another one that can be pretty useful, um, the slave output is painful, um, but right now, obviously, most of your money, as you can see, most of my money here comes from commerce rather than taxes, so it's not a huge one. Right to enter uh, legal contracts is interesting because you get uh, integration and Freeman output, but you don't get any happiness. In fact, you get a negative slave penalty. I wouldn't do this one unless you're going to integrate them um, afterwards, which obviously by that I mean change their status to citizen or noble, uh, just because um, the penalty to a slave happiness isn't worth incurring. Then you've got right of inheritance, um, basically happiness and integration speed and some loyalty. Now, some of these numbers have been played around with patches, so be careful which patch you're on when you're um, saying that these things do or do not apply. Um, the most recent patch adjusted this slightly. So just be aware that this may change. Um, this one's pretty useful. Uh, that obviously, the penalty is short-lived, so it's not massive. As you can see, I've granted... Um, sorry, if we search by population here. As you can see, I've granted some rights specifically to the Aramaic people living here to keep them more happy. Uh, uh, sorry, I haven't granted them any. I was going to, but I'll show you. Um, so we'll probably do right of intermarriage. We'll lose 10 stability, which hurts considering I have no stability. But we invoke it. Now all of a sudden their population have a default of 28. If we were to click in here, doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, well, that's slaves. So <laughs> they're always unhappy, basically. Um, you'll see here that these cultures are... Um, more on the happy side than they were before, if that makes sense. Um, obviously, there's a penalty towards the... Ugh. Give me a second here. So I'm not used to this new one. Uh, so, here we are. so you see we have a 5% penalty. We've just balanced it out by a 6. Once that's gone, their happiness should rise um, to a reasonable level. Should get back up into the 20s, which hopefully will stop them from being as unhappy. Obviously, they're not integrated, so there are penalties left and right. But over time, once the stability goes up and the war aggressive expansion goes down, they should be loyal. Now, a lot of you have been asking me um, when to integrate a population. Well, my advice is you go here and you click on sort by number of population in our culture and then go from there. Uh, your top one, which is your should be your noble status, should always be, you know, integrated noble the next one unless this is not your largest one i should say if this is not your largest culture group it is probably worth taking your largest culture group and making them at least into citizens it will stabilize your empire and you'll get greater you know research output because you'll actually have citizens researching um so that's a rough rule of thumb if your noble culture is not your largest culture promote another culture to be your largest one however and i will point this out that once a culture is integrated, it does not get culturally converted to your noble culture. Which means if I wanted to convert Babylonian culture, I would have to unintegrate Babylonian culture, which would make them extraordinarily unhappy for a while before it would start integrating. However, you could integrate a culture, keep them happy, go through and put in lots of temples and grand theaters, and then unintegrate them make them unhappy, but then the integration buildings are in place to integrate them faster. Uh, that is an option. Uh, could be used for long-term uh, occupations. You'll notice I've been converting quite a bit of the land that's not directly Babylonian into my uh, culture. Uh, uh, sorry, into my religion. Thankfully, culture-converted pops still convert religiously, but they do not convert culturally. As you'll see, the Babylonian culture is totally intact, basically. 
but the religion, the Chaldean religion, is being replaced by Hellenic. So it could be worth integrating them, religiously converting them, and then turning it off, and then once they're happy due to being of your religion, then you can culturally convert them easier. Now, as you'll see, we've got this Aramaic culture group, which I just recently solidified my control of in a war against Ptolemy, is larger than my Persian group, but is still unintegrated. Now, this is where things get tricky. So they are at 28% happiness. Obviously, that'll go up to 32 given time. However, if I take another integrated culture, I'm going to get another penalty, which is going to make the primary culture happiness have a large uh, be unhappy and might not be worth offending the Macedonians, Babylonians, Medians, and Persians just to get the Aramaic stable. So as far as I can tell, four fully integrated cultures is roughly the tipping point. You could go higher as obviously you get tech that like open religion fuge um, makes them more happy. Um, be aware it takes like two innovations to increase your primary culture happiness to make it worth integrating another culture. So I'd say about three or four at that point. Anything beyond that, you're going to be making your primary culture uh, more unhappy to the point they won't give as much output. So uh, rule of thumb, if they get larger, so like I could replace Persian with Aramaic. Thankfully, the difference is not too large. But for example, if I had... Um, Utian down here integrated, but I didn't have Aramaic. I probably would want to replace them as time goes on. So you usually want your largest cultures to be integrated, your smaller cultures to be unintegrated. Um, keep an eye on which cultures dominate. If you conquer a whole area like, I don't know, Egypt, it might be worth uh, culturally integrating Egypt and replacing Assyrian with it or something, or replacing Assyrian with Egyptian because you've got a huge culture. Uh, so that means when you conquer large population areas, looking at you, Egypt, Indus River Valley type stuff, or Rome area, Italy, uh, be aware you probably want to swap your culture around, keep your largest groups integrated. Your largest group should either be your nobles or a fully integrated culture. Uh, your nobles ideally should be in your top like four or five cultures. If they're not, you need to do some more conversion because <laughs> that means your nobles are probably your any buildings you build to get nobles may not actually have the culture population in their city uh, to fully fill out those buildings. So, uh, so basically, conquer within your culture group first. They'll be more loyal. So, as Rome, unite Italy before trying to invade Gaul. If you're the Greeks, conquer the other Greek lands. Integrate the cultures that you want to keep. Um, integrating them does, it, it is important to integrate some cultures because it will unlock new traditions. Let's see, I think I can show you. Here we go. In Greek, embrace Greco Persian influence. Um, in order to embrace this, which unlocks the Persian military traditions, I need to have Babylonia as an integrated culture with at least 275 pops in its culture and belongs to the Aramaic culture group. Um, after I embrace that, I can. Um, unintegrate Persian culture and I will still keep those traditions unlocked. So if you want to unlock all the tradition trees, which it's going to take you forever, uh, you do need to integrate cultures. You can then unintegrate them. So that's kind of cool. Um, specifically, if you, you know invade Rome and you want to get some of their crazy culture innovations for free, um, you got to embrace them, at which point then you can unembrace Rome and convert it if you're Gaul. So it's a very fun mechanic. Uh, it does take a long time though. Like if we look here, um, as you can see, there are mass, massive penalties towards assimilating culture. Um, it's much easier to assimilate religion, um, which is why I recommend you build um, grand temples and grand theaters places because then they integrate them. You'll see here that there's no current assimilation because we have median. If we find another city out here, You'll see that these guys are slowly assimilating. These guys are culture. Where's my... I'm sorry. I had... Here we go. This is what I wanted to show you guys. So as you can see, we built a grand temple here. This is converting at 1% a month. This is does not have a grand theater, so it's basically never going to assimilate. We can, of course, change this by changing our policy towards cultural assimilation or religious conversion. You'll notice the religious conversion is much higher. Um, 
Spreading our faith makes it easier to assimilate popular pops into the country's dominant culture, which means if you want to culturally convert people, convert them religiously first, then move to cultural assimilation. So grand temples, religious conversion, then grand theaters and cultural assimilation. That's the rough rule of thumb. So hopefully this has helped you guys understand culture better. If it has, go check out my other guides and please like and subscribe. I also have a Discord. The link should be on my channel homepage or in the description. If it doesn't work, let me know. But uh, feel free to come on there, ask me questions, and just generally hang out. We got a nice crew of people there. So I will see you guys all in another episode. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.